Hello and welcome to the iRacing Grand Prix series here on Apex Racing TV. We're here at the Brazilian circuit in Interlagos. I'm Sam Fitzpatrick and alongside me is Marco Barbonet and Scott Newton on the cameras. And Marco, this is a beloved circuit. Uh, it's liked in really all cars, but these, uh, these F1 cars, this McLaren MP4-30 uh, really does uh, look great around these, uh, around these corners. Absolutely. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Interlagos, uh, one of the, as you said, classic tracks of Formula One. We're going to have an awesome up and down ride along this short but challenging track. And we have 17 of the best drivers in the world today, and they will put on an absolute spectacle. It's not going to be easy for them because you see uh, already, if you know the track, uh, there is a lot of, uh, as I said, climbing down the hill and going down and very fast. Uh, corners, uh, slower corners, and the beautiful final part of the track uh, with the archibancadas uh, and the subiado boxes uh, is basically like running uh, on an oval and then going up and then down to the Senna S. So plenty of passing space there and at the end of the opposite straight, we are in for a very nice race, I think, uh, Sam. Yes, yeah, certainly. You can stick to the corner names, I think. Uh, I'm <laughs> not even going to go there. And uh, you may have to pronounce a couple of the driver names as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, an awesome circuit, this. And uh, of course, last time out at Silverstone, we saw a fantastic event. Different strategies out there. We did see a dominant victory. However, Jimmy Fluke isn't here today, so it should be very, very competitive out there. But um, 41 degrees track temperature, a lot warmer than it was at Silverstone. And that's going to make the one stop. Uh, is it going to make it impossible, do you think? Or do you think that might still be possible? Maybe a lot of drivers just resort into the two stop today. Well, I don't know. We've got uh, 46 laps, so uh, the race is not that long. But you, you said it right. Uh, we, we are expecting uh, very high track temps. So we'll see. We know that the, these tires don't last very long. Uh, I still think that they are going to do the best drivers will go for the one stopper, I think. But we can be surprised, of course, they are the drivers uh, we are just commentating and uh, we are, uh, at least I am, historically very bad at predicting strategies, a uh, point in case <laughs> the various V8 races we have done together. Also remember, next week on Saturday, the V8 starts again, the Euro V8s, so don't miss it. Uh, I think that the field is very competitive today, Sam, because uh, as you said, the past week's winner is not here, but we got very angry drivers, uh, Enric Andre, Matteo Carestani, uh, Harrison Finch, all they want to redeem themselves uh, and uh, have a shot vi at victory after uh, last week's dominance by the Apex driver. Yeah, definitely, they'll see this as an opportunity, no doubt, and uh, looking at the grid, there is really no one who uh, necessarily stands out currently. The, uh, the, the qualifying is separated top three separated by just over a tenth, a tenth and a half. So it's going to be absolutely fascinating out there. And this is a short, a short circuit, so lap times are going to be quite close, but the top ten separated, separated currently by less than a second. It looks really, really competitive out there. And uh, yeah, like you said, a couple of drivers will be, uh, will be looking for a bit of vengeance against one another. But uh, these guys might be starting to think about the championship a little bit. This is extremely early and a lot of drivers won't be uh, worrying about the championship too much. But I think it was Harrison Finch who won the championship last season. And I imagine he'll want to back that up. Of course, I think he told us last week that he would. And starting from second currently, he could still put in a faster time. But um, he'll be looking to just pick up a lot more points, Mark. At least get a podium up there, I think. Yes, we said, he said last week in the interview with us that uh, he was going to and he expected to be at front of the pack every time uh, because he's aiming for the championship again. One thing I'm a little bit worried, and uh, I say this for every track, but this in particular, the run to the first corner and then the first corner are extremely dangerous. Uh, we get uh, the, the cars starting uh, pointing upwards so they're not going to have that good of a jump then immediately you have the braking zone the track starts going down very very fast and it sort of compresses you and there's the pit wall that sticks out a little bit on the left side 
and you have to go down the Senna S and everybody will be fighting and uh, trying to get space. So I expect to see a little bit of contact there. Qualifying in front is very important and the drivers who qualified mid-pack and backwards are in a bit of a bit of a struggle right now and I hope that they don't get involved in anything silly. Yes, definitely. And um, yeah, that turn one can be a bit difficult because our camera uh, man today, Scott Newton, uh, he will know the worst of it. An Australian driver, often that netco can really cost you going through that center S on the opening lap. We have got the grid for you ready. Matteo Calastani on pole position has some pinch starts in second, just two one hundredths behind. Enric Andre starts in third. He had a good race pace at Silverstone. Josh Thompson, he's always quick in whatever car he drives. He starts in fourth. Stefan Schmidt in fifth. Uh, Fabrizio uh, Gobbi in sixth. Uh, Rinaldo Augusto in seventh. And it's Benjamin Lindsay eighth. Michael Kayser ninth. And Carl Germanton rounding out the top ten. It's then Jan Brezina, Alexei Sorokin, Luca Furlick, Pablo Lumbras Suarez, I think, uh, in 14th. And it's Tyson Meyer. Uh, Giuseppe Ragusa and Christian Ritzema rounding out the field. Just got a uh, not too long until the start of this event. And uh, yeah, it could be one to watch this very high track temperature. As, as we've already said, the uh, strategy is going to play a very leading part out there. And I just got a few more cars to line up. And uh, yeah, we will be away very very soon green, green, green. and away we go did Calestani jump the start? not quite sure about that one everybody behaving through turn one and two and uh, Harrison Finch take, took the lead going to the first corner I saw some movement from Calisani now cars going left and right all sorts of crazy stuff going into the left hander here double left hander that brings us to the roller coaster part of the track and Calisani under attack once again we see risk includes second place and uh, I mean everybody top-notch performance uh, going to the first corner no contacts whatsoever so all good right now but yeah Kalestani lost the third position let's see if he will add for the pits in the ne next three laps because I think it's also movement from his car might have been uh, my connection uh, but I saw some smoke from his tires uh, before the lights went off yeah I was just having a couple of issues on the race start uh, was he uh, what how did he lose that um... P1, well, despite the uh, jump start that you think he may have got, did he uh, kind of hesitate once he thought he'd got the jump start? Yeah, I, I thought it looked like, oh, he's blocking now on the left side. We see Henry Kander on the outside. Now he has the inside on the center S and maybe he's got the position. Wow, some very close racing. I saw Calestani move and then stop. So, oh, right. oh, he's on the grass! Oh, man! Great defense, and maybe to the inside still goes Kalastani, but Andre holds on. That was a brilliant move from Andre to pull it off. Took him the entire center race to uh, pull it off. And uh, Stefan Schmidt moved ahead of Josh Thompson uh, in this early uh, early period of the race. Josh, quite an aggressive driver. I'm sure he will not want to uh, put up with that for very long, and he'll be looking straight back past. But uh, it's pretty close all behind. Ragusa managed to gain five positions from 16th to 11th. So awesome start for him. I don't think he set a uh, a qualifying time. So he should be, uh, maybe his race pace was quite a bit better. Maybe he had two invalidated laps, putting him out of position for this race start. Still two seconds between Finch and Andre out in the lead. No DOS, I think, in these early stages. But, uh, oh, it's just side by side, actually. Uh, Kalastani uh, and Thompson is that. And, uh, Kalis, uh, sorry, Thompson and Schmidt. So Thompson managed to get back past Schmidt then, going uh, down, uh, coming out of turn 15 through turn 16, and he's back up into that P4. And I think Thompson 
could have re could have the pace to win this one, Marco. In qualifying, he was right with the uh, top three. Yeah. So we're seeing Karasani not beating. So uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe at like a, sometimes when you get a very slight movement uh, and then you stop, uh, you get still inside that tolerance zone and then you don't get penalized. But he was very very slow off start. He's not heading for the pit, so I don't think he's going to get a penalty because he, I think he should pit right now if he has a penalty. But yeah, you are right. Uh, all these drivers uh, in the top five, uh, I think, have a good shot at winning. What? The start did, the hesitation by Calestani and then the fight between uh, Calestani himself and Andre, let Harrison Finch get a very good lead, is up to 2.5 seconds right now, so that is big, especially just three laps into the race. Schmitz is falling down the field. He's already lost a position to Thompson and he's having to go defensive now against Gobby. Gobby to the outside. Scott, he can just go around the outside here, he'll have the inside for turn two. And he's pulled it off brilliantly. Now can Schmidt respond? He'll have the slipstream here. Didn't really get a better exit, but can he find the inside? Sure, he's got to go defensive here. Scobby, but he's just staying to the racing line. He got DOS though, crucially, down this straight into turn four. And Schmidt loses two positions in the space of two laps. Yeah, the Reta Oposta is not very long. And you have to be so close to the car in front, uh, exiting the Senna S and the Curva de Sol to get a good slipstream and make the pass. I'm expecting more overtakes uh, at the final uh, start-finish line at the Archibancadas because it's much, much longer and uh, you have the banking sort of helping you make in the, the corner even if you are behind another car. Yeah, and I think uh, Schmidt might be uh, yeah, falling victim to that base scene because he's just struggling for pace at the moment. got a good qualifying in fifth moved up into fourth in the uh, opening lap or so but he's uh you can see he's already kind of dropped almost out of DRS zone of Gobby but he has got DRS this time and that will just protect him for this lap at least he's got to be really careful from the three cars behind still Finch is pulling away significantly six tenths faster on that last lap than Enric Andre and he's uh, looking very comfortable here is Lindsay then uh, is he trying to go for a move on Kaiser Guys, I do like that livery, I must say. And uh, for now, he's uh, holding on to, uh, to P7. Yeah, it reminds us of the old school uh, Renault liveries, absolutely, and uh, it's very nice. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the cars are basically you can you can divide this track in three parts. First part uh, in the back stretch. Then there's this technical section here with all these air pins left, right, left, right. And it's very difficult to pass here, but it's, it's massively important to follow the car in front of you closely. And then you get to the crazy high speed section here at the end of the lap. And I am so surprised that Formula One does not use the Brazilian stock cars uh, chicane right here. Because these walls on the right are so close and so unforgiving. And we've seen over the years some massive crashes. And Mark Webber knows something about that at that corner. Yeah, absolutely. Twice, yeah, didn't he? Twice. Uh, 2003 yeah. and LMP1s in uh, 2014, I believe. So, uh, yeah, he knows that corner better than anyone else. Also, Duresta crashing back in 2012. Pretty much handed Vettel the title. And uh, defensive again from Schmidt. And he might lose out here. Round the outside goes Kaiser. That's a superb move. Just had so much more confidence and almost spinning in the background there. That was... Uh, that was um, that was Lindsay then, or so Brazina nearly Brazina, losing yeah. out, and he's lo losing out again here. So uh, yeah, not a good couple of points for Brazina, and um, yeah, I think it was either him or Lindsay who all of a sudden nearly lost the car coming out of turn five. Yeah, some crazy action. You see, uh, even even though the back straight, uh, if you can call it like that, they call it like this in, uh, in Portuguese on the official track map. It's not that long. What it does, it provides the car that has the DRS maybe a chance to move out, move out and be seen from the mirrors of the car in front. So you put pressure on the car in front of you, but still you also have to take into account the cars behind you. So you get like uh, three wide situations getting into the corner and that has to be resolved. See now Brazina still in a little bit of uh, trouble here looking uh, behind him. We have, uh, I think, uh, 
I think we have uh, Kyle Germanton behind him. You see, they are fanning out left and right, trying to cover, trying to make a pass. At uh, that, you have to it has to be resolved before the slow section of the track. Oh, he's got through. That's a really good move. Really well constructed. Vizina kind of had a misplaced pass, although they might still be able to come back here down the inside. And you really want the inside here because it's so difficult to run around the outside. You will have the inside for the next corner. Jermanton, that's a brilliant move. He seems to have pulled it off now. And yes, he is now just ahead. So Brazina drops again. He starts at 11th, made a good start, gained a few positions, but he's back into 10th position now. Oh, have we got a crash just ahead? I thought I heard a big yeah, impact. Yeah, there's a yeah. car in the wall and it's Michael Kaiser. Right, so let's see what happens here. And he does he just run wide here? Oh, I think that must be a hardware failure. Really disappointing for Kaiser. Just went straight on there. And um, he was having a really good run, showing very impressive pace. I think he was running in the top six or top five even. But he's, uh, yeah, that's really disappointing for him. And that will be his race over. Yeah, very strange crash. He went straight on in a corner that usually you take uh, quite easily to the left. And uh, yeah, it looked viciously like uh, an hardware failure for him. Andre's got a little bit of a key behind him. He's got a bit of pressure being put on by Kalastani. Remember, the pole sits that didn't have a good start, and Andre managed to get the move quickly after. I think Kalastani will be really regretting that because he's lock looking almost a little bit stuck behind his rival, although he's not all over the back, and I don't think he's really been able to close to within passing distance so far. And he will close down here, the DRS helping him out. And it's so difficult to follow through this part of the circuit. You've got to get your turn-ins right. The turbulent air just affecting you ever so slightly. He's done pretty well to keep close there. Four and a half tenths the gap between the two of them. I still think he's going to be too far behind going into turn four. And he's taking a, 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 a surprising line there. But um, still, uh, Cal Andre, Calistani, Thompson and Gobby all looking strong for a potential podium up there. Yeah, I don't know why Kalestani moved out of the slipstream there because you could have, he had a DRS, so you could have closed the, the gap a little bit, uh, getting into the braking zone. Uh, but yeah, um, maybe he knows something that we don't know. Yeah, perhaps I doubt it'd be anything to do with like the cooling or the uh, tire management. But um, yeah, that was an odd one. Of course, tire management still important, and um, of course, in lap nine of this event if they're going to go for a two stopper then I guess it's going to be lap 15 isn't it maybe a little bit earlier than that for their first pit stop we'll wait and see but really a one stopper should be quite simple for them despite this very very high track temperature and Andre actually is under more pressure this time from uh, from Kalistani down to just three tenths between them now and actually, you might have a run here. So he really closed in down the uh, down the uh, pit straight. But again, pulls out of the slipstream. And without that, he would have been really close, wouldn't he? But yeah, <laughs> we, clearly he knows something we don't. Yeah, I um, I know Matteo, so I will try to talk to him after the race uh, if he doesn't show. And um, because I'm really curious to ask about this and about that uh, very very slow slow start uh, he had of course one of the most famous drivers in the italian community right now and for good reasons he's very very fast so yeah i think he has the speed to make the pass but he's getting out of the slip i, I know that maybe he thinks he cannot get the pass anyway he's, uh, so he needs to get better exit from the corner but still you try to gain whatever you can so staying in the slipstream may help him be more close and then maybe put some pressure to Andre when they get to the uh, airpin section. You see here, he does the same thing. He just gets in the slipstream at corner entry at the Senais. He's just as close as he was on the last lap. Of course, we have got Harrison Finch some six and a half seconds ahead of these two. He's running away with this event. 
unless maybe he's uh, going to have to do one extra pit stop. Maybe he's going for a two-stopper, but it's looking unlikely right now. It just seems as though he's got constantly four, five more tenths than his competitors. Six and a half seconds, like I said. And once again, Andre pretty comfortable in that P2. Uh, Lindsay managed to get past Schmidt, by the way, on that last stop. I didn't actually see it um, myself, but... I just saw uh, on the time and screen, so uh, Schmidt down to 7th position after running in 4th earlier on. And if anything, Kalistani is closer now to this part of the circuit than he's ever been. Yeah, good uh, speed for Kalistani in the slower section. Let's see if he can get good slipstream now. Of course, he will have DRS. Yeah, so he'll deploy it down here. He's not going to be close enough, is he? Unless there's maybe can use the energy deployment and down the inside goes Kalistani. Andre had to deploy some or recover some energy pretty early on there. And uh, it allows Kalistani to just use his extra bit of battery power. But he's going to be under pressure here. Now the slipstream and the DOS this time for Andre. He goes to the outside. Kalistani holding onto the inside. He's got a swoop round here, does Andre. But Kalistani maybe has the ideal line. Maybe he doesn't. Andre round the outside. He's going to have the inside for the next corner. Ooh. Nice, superb defense. Can Kalistani come back? No. Well, that was uh, looked like he's got the uh, job done, didn't it? But um, brilliant move around the outside from Andre there. And just use the momentum he gained with the DOS to just swoop round. You see that that was important for uh, for Andre because he did the move on the outside on the Decida do Lago. That corner is slightly banked. So being on the outside was not such a disadvantage because he had the banking working in his favor and he was able to complete the pass. Beautiful racing between these two. Well, it's just going to resume down here again. Quarter of a second between the two of them. And uh, I think uh, Kalstein might be going for another move. We've got a spinner, though. Uh, Lindsay is dropping down the field and Kalistani I think is uh, just making the move on Andre the side by side going into turn one and Andre just about defending Kalistani trying to come back again but he can't quite they were side by side I think going into turn one and once again into the slipstream yeah uh, Kalistani looking uh, he won't try for a won't go for a pass this time what this does in the meantime is that Harrison Finch now has got a 10 second advantage over the Two guys behind him and Thompson and Gobby are closing on these two. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, they're easily catching up now. It's going to be a four-way bounce before you know it. And with tyres degrading as they are, they, these drivers are having to push these drivers probably to about the 20 lap mark in this first stint at least. And it's really, really difficult for these drivers to make it. Lindsay, by the way, did have that spin. He uh, dropped from fifth to 10th now in fact he was down to 11th but quickly made the move on Rinaldo Augusta so um, he's back up into P10 now but Lindsay having a good run but yeah drops down the field now are there going to be any moves down to turn one this time Kalistani once again closing in Andre going super defensive Thompson's got the box office seat here and Andre just about defends Kalistani now he's got a brilliant run through here just a little bit of time and maybe a little bit cautious but Andre struggling to get the power away through turn three Kalistani goes to the outside Andre wants the inside that's all he care about, cares about right now he just wants to keep track position and for now he does we have uh, the first guy in the pits is Reynaldo Augusto I don't know if it's for damage or a scheduled pit stop but still he is uh, in and out in nine seconds so i think it's, it's a regular yeah a little yeah. bit longer isn't it no, nine seconds not, maybe yeah. he had uh, front wing damage yeah it had just been overtaken i think by lindsay and I, I think he straight away lost some time to lindsay so i wonder if there may be a little bit of contact between the two of them and uh, that's forced him into the pits but i mean never know that could be uh could be a blessing in disguise it could be the uh, right strategy, the two-stopper, could really put in some strong lap times now to uh, to to the end of this event. Gobby, Jumanton and Schmidt all very close with Rebusa and uh, and Brezina as well. And I think Schmidt did lose out to Jumanton on that last lap, I think. So yeah, Jumanton up into P6 now. 
And are those two teammates, uh, you think, Jermanson and, uh, and Schmidt? Yeah, I see the same livery, beautiful, uh, very colorful, I like it. So yeah, I think they are teammates. Yeah, and actually they've given us a bit of a shout out on their Facebook page, so uh, so thanks guys for that. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for shouting us out on the, on your page. And uh, yeah, it's going very well currently in 6th and 7th Schmidt. Currently in 7th, hasn't really had the pace of the uh, midfield, but uh, after a good qualifying and a good start, certainly has had track position so far unlike, unlike some of his rivals has not put a foot wrong Ragusa up eight positions now from 16th on the grid uh, we thought maybe he'd uh, put in a couple of inbound lap times in qualifying and he could be very dangerous maybe for a top five almost the best of the race finish out there but for now he's got to make sure that he makes this move on Schmidt to the outside he goes and we've seen this uh, overtake technique work before. And it looks like it's going to work again for Ragusa. That's very nicely done around the outside. Now Schmidt under pressure again from Grazina. Grazina will look to the inside. And down the inside he goes. No response it seems for Schmidt there. And uh, yeah, Schmidt just struggling a little bit. And... Uh, Brezina moving up into P8 now. Is it worth maybe Schmidt pitting in now, ch changing his strategy ever so slightly because he's really struggling for pace up there? Might be worth him just mixing it up because right now it's looking like he's destined for a, uh, a, a, a top 10 finish at absolute best. I don't know. Uh, if if everybody is going for a one-stopper, it's not very good. Uh, I think he has to maybe take a deep breath and try to focus on what he's doing wrong and uh, just stay calm do your own lines uh, you are right by the way is uh, losing a lot of positions maybe use these tires too much in the first few laps but doing one stop more than because it's, again i still think that most of the drivers will go for a one stopper so he can stop now and uh, have fresh tires but the, then he has to make them last until the end of the race or do another stop and that would be catastrophic for his final position under attack again we see Brezina yeah trying to spawn now is, is Schmidt but um, yeah can't get close enough for now and Lindsay just behind those two have already had their little bit of a battle and that's going to resume after Lindsay's mistake coming out of turn 13 earlier on still second third fourth and fifth stay oh no sorry gobby's got past thompson that was earlier on in the lap i think so gobby's managed to move up into that p4 may have been a mistake from thompson if anything because he was right on the tail of Kalistani before and here it is so gobby and thompson then just ahead and thompson just got a bit of oversteer and uh, struggled to get back onto the circuit and that's cost him that P4 after really looking strong Thompson and uh, still that P2 looking very possible and Kalistani and Thompson are in now that is a very very early one stop don't you think Mark Kate? lap 17 uh, that's yeah. surely a two stop uh yeah 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 once again I think uh, my strategy uh, prediction uh, is wrong <laughs> we'll see how Kalestani and Thompson will do with fresh tires and they are hoping to not get into traffic. It looks pretty decent for them right now. So uh, yeah, looks like so they could pump in some very strong lap times. So now we wait to see what Finch, Andre and Gobby will do. Along with Jermanton, who we should just shout out here. Jermanton and Mugusa have actually been lapping faster than that group for the uh, for about five laps now. and. Um, they were six seconds behind before, and they're really in the battle for potentially a podium after starting out of position. Jermanton back in uh, in 10th, Ragusa in 16th, and they could definitely be fighting with the leaders by the end of this event. And Andre's in then, so it's just Gobby, Finch, we'll see if Jermanton comes in as well, and they do. So, the two-stopper. Of course, one of our, our, our main policies here at Apex Racing TV is to get the strategy wrong, but the, uh, the uh, T-stop certainly seems to be the consensus out there. Yeah, and uh, we'll see if uh, 
Gobby will uh, bite the bullet and pit the next lap, or if he is staying out, uh, we know that Harrison Finch is pretty comfortable out there, so I don't think he will be responding uh, quick enough. And now we see Calestani, and he is uh, right behind uh, Andre. Yes, yeah, so and no change of position. I think they had to make an overtake, and that's actually cost them uh, quite significantly now we'll see if uh, if finch comes in so also um yes yeah, so finch is he in no he's not so maybe he's going for the one stopper it'd be quite impressive if, he, if he's saved the tires as he has whilst building up a 15 second lead like he had but whichever strategy he goes for as long as he remains error free he should be fine gobby i think stayed out as well so clearly a divide in the strategy and this is what we want to see isn't it Marco? absolutely it's what we like and this is all due to the tires that uh, drop off really quickly and we see stefan schmidt in and it really makes also a difference not only in the strategy which are interesting but also you can if you have a good skill in tire management uh, you can gain from it so We'll see how some of these drivers that are staying out will uh, perform as the race goes on. Palestine was very, very close to Onje at one point on that last lap. Still can't make that mistake. We saw that fantastic battle, which were they were side by side for the uh, first kind of third of the lap. And he couldn't make it stick, good Kalistani. Andre hanging on to that P5. Thompson just behind these guys. Andre with uh, one lap fresher tyres. How important could that be for the uh, for the rest of the race, potentially? Finch is in then, and uh, he's left himself open here, hasn't he? Tw uh, 20 laps then, fitting in on lap 20. He's got to do 26 in this second stint. Ah, oh, it's a tight one, isn't it? And Gobby's yeah. in as well. Mm, Gobby's in as well. Uh, Brezina is in. So almost everybody besides Benjamin Lindsay has stopped from the leading pack. But I think that uh, Finch will still get out in front of Lindsay and by a comfortable margin. So he is get, he's got a chance to do to win the race, leading every lap and doing the fastest lap so far. Yeah, it's been absolutely superb so far. And uh, Gobby has come out. And he had a bit of a longer pit stop then, did Gobby. So that hasn't really worked out for him. He's quite a bit behind now. The driver said he was quite some four. Remember, he was up in P4. He got past Josh Thompson, but he's now six and a half seconds behind Thompson and in some traffic. Really does matter whether or not he's going for the one stop throughout here. It will be... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's right on the knife edge, isn't it? Only Lindsay, I'd say, it has fully committed to a, uh, a one-stopper uh, marker. I don't know why he'd stay out so long if he was on a two-stopper. But, uh, yeah, it's difficult with Gobby, isn't it? I feel like with ha Harrison Finch, you know, he's eight seconds in the lead. Whatever he does, he's going to win this event, I think. But, um, yeah, it's right on the knife edge for Gobby. Andre trying to get past, also Andre under pressure from Kalastani still, and Furlick just coming in. Kalastani, how close is he this, this? How close is he this time? He's some two tenths behind. Super defensive goes Andre. This has been a superb bounce between these two. Still Andre holding him back quite comfortably down into turn four. And as a testament to the ability of these drivers, uh, they have been battling. Uh, so so closely for the past 10 15 laps even going side by side multiple times and they have been very clean very respectful uh, this is the racing we love to see especially since we are uh, doing this in, with the uh, open wheelers so you know that the minimum touch can destroy a race uh, and send your car uh, basically behind uh, the wall because pension aero damage and all the nest stuff that we don't like so congratulations to both of these guys and I hope they can continue this battle until uh, lap 46. Yes, certainly looking that way at the moment, although you feel as though maybe Kalistani has got a bit more pace. Lindsay's in. He's definitely on a one-stopper. Let's see if Andre can uh, hold off Kalistani. There's nothing between the two of them heading down into turn one and Kalistani trying to go down the outside. He can't quite make it. And um, 
yet. He's a lit as well. It's about the same gap this time, although he hasn't really fancied his chances into turn four so far. And yes, once again, he uh, remains just behind. So Lindsay comes out, I think, in P10. That's kind of worked out for him, I feel like, Marco, because he, if he'd stayed out and gone for the two-stopper, he would have just got stuck in traffic anyway. So I feel like with the one-stopper, he's not going to have to make the overtakes on track. And clearly he had very good pace because he's lost no time to his rivals. Yeah, if he can uh, manage to... Uh, do a one stopper is going to gain a lot of positions. Now the key part of this race begins because he has to choose uh, carefully whether to make attempts for overtakes and uh, of course save his tires. So we are going to see keeping a close eye on him and see what he does. And uh, if he's going for that one stopper, he can really, really gain a lot of. Now, of course, if things get bad, he can also switch to a two-stopper as well. But I, I hope he's committed to the one-stopper because, uh, as you said, we like to see some different strategy. And he goes for a pass. Yeah, these moves should be pretty simple for him. And straight past uh, Stefan Schmitz then. So that's number one gone. And then he'll have to get past Rosina as well. Gobby is back up into P5, by the way. He's uh, six seconds behind Thompson. Remember, he was ahead of Thompson before the pit stops. Ragusa and Jamanson are following Gobby and they're going to all try to chase down second, third and fourth. It's a really interesting battle out there at the moment. Jamanson just had a bit of a poor lap time that last time out. I think he may have been overtaken by uh, Ragusa in fact. But um, yeah, it will be fascinating to see if Gobby uh, can catch up to uh, second, third and fourth because right now Gobby is some um, uh, eight tenths a lap faster than uh, than the drivers ahead, Mark. Yeah, and now we see uh, just to mention our leader Harrison Finch, one twelve five three, so fastest lap of the race, and his lap consistently faster. I mean, almost one second and more than one second faster than the guy behind him. Of course, uh, Andre Calistani are all in a battle, uh, also Thompson as well. And uh, you are right, uh, Gobby is uh, getting closer. So we might have once again a four-way battle for him. Yeah, I think so. Andre and Kalistani were extremely close down into turn one. I actually saw them overlap, uh, or, or sorry, um, kind of change positions for a split second. I wonder if there was a little bit of contact between the two of them because um, all of a sudden Kalistani seemed to lose about half a second. So maybe just a misplaced pass. It's, we can't really turn our eyes against this, uh, away from this one, because we don't want to miss it. But of course, Harrison Finch driving absolutely superbly out in the lead, 17 seconds ahead. And like I said, Marco, putting in some stunning lap times, by far the fastest driver out on the circuit. Uh, we need a split screen like they do in the dart. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so Kalistani trying to get behind Andre, and he will have, of course, the DRS, so he will get very close in the braking zone. Not attempting a pass, we've seen from Kalistani that he wants to make sure he is very, very close before he tries to make a pass. So he's not risking a dive bomb, at least not now. Lindsay going for another pass on Brasina, and does it. Yeah, you know what? Lindsay could be in the... in. On, on the podium by the end of this race. It's really, uh, re really interesting race this because Andre and Kalistani losing each other so much time by fighting one another. Lindsay uh, on that last lap was half a second faster and remember may well have to do one less stop than those drivers. So um, throughout this event, second and third Andre and Kalistani have, have, haven't really been, um, you know, that quick and just been chased down by the drivers behind, but we could have potentially an Andre, Kalistani, Thompson, Gobby, Ragusa, Jamanton, Lindsay battle all for the podium. This is really warming up very nicely. Yeah, this is what we want to see, of course. Uh, this is the beauty of uh, this race, in these races as well. Sometimes you don't have a good battle for the lead, but you have uh, these drivers are so closely matched that you get a battle for P2, P3, whatever, almost a guarantee. and. Uh, we see, uh, you're right, uh, basically 
of course, it, the, the, the easier and logical thing for Andre and Karestani would be, you know, let's wait a bit and uh, don't battle, just stay one, one after the other and do some fast laps and then we battle at the end of the race. But of course, these are racing drivers, not human uh, calculators, so it's logical and good that they are battling. Not good for them, very good for us. Yeah, definitely. But we'll, we'll go remember, because if Andre loses track position to Calistani, it very much looks like on the on the judge of, of this race, Calistani would just drive off into the distance. So Andre is pretty much between a rock and a hard place. Either he can let past Calistani and maybe uh, bolster his chances for a podium, but right off second place, or he can uh, hold on to this position at the moment and potentially put his podium in jeopardy but um, potentially get second position. So it's uh, absolutely fascinating this race. This is uh, fantastic to, uh, to, to cover, of course. And uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the Silverstone round as well. And uh, the strategy in these events is uh, really uh, very, very interesting. Still got a long way to go. Lap, um, lap 28 of this event. So, uh, yeah more than halfway and it has really raced by at the moment and uh, yeah whilst we've got probably a moment to breathe we'll just go through the all it's Harrison Finch leading the way very comfortably 18 seconds out in the lead and uh, pretty much has all the cards that he could possibly want Enric Andre running in second position holding off Matteo Calastani those two have been in a race long battle Josh Thompson has been just behind these guys throughout the event he's looking strong in fourth uh, Fabrizio Gobbi, a slightly alternative strategy, he could go for the one-stopper, but could um, just go for the two-stopper. He's got much fresher tyres than the drivers ahead and chasing them down currently. Giuseppe Ragusa, after starting in 16th, he's up to six. He could get himself into a podium potential, potential by the end of the event. Uh, Carl Germanson in 7th, he's also on the charge. So too is Benjamin Lindsay in 8th. Then it's Jan Brezina in ninth, looking strong after starting in 11th. Uh, Stefan Schmidt in 10th. And it's Ronaldo Augusto, Luca Ferlic, who I think might be on a one stopper. Uh, Alexei Sorokin, uh, Christian Ritz Semmer, and Pablo Lumbrus Suarez with Tyson Meyer and Michael Kaiser out of the race after a hardware failure. See Pablo Lumbrera Suarez getting lapped right now by the guys in P2, P3 and P4 and what I'm seeing right now and Calistani goes for the pass oh not an easy place to pass here at the Bico de Pato absolutely that was a brave move it was maybe Andre was caught uh, oh, by, surprise, by, the, by the lapper and again at the Junson oh man oh Calistani almost goes around and where's Thompson in relation to this? Here comes Josh Thompson. So, Calistani might still have a move at this second position, but here comes Thompson with the slipstream, with the DRS here. Andre's really vulnerable here, and Thompson could get the pair then. To the outside, it's going to be three wide, three and wide. Thompson's oh. off, and he could hit the wall. He's missed it, though. And Andre moves, uh, or sorry, holds on to second position. Thompson's off the circuit. Is he going to be pressure from uh, Gobby, potentially? Thompson there, just got a wheel onto the grass. And, uh, no, that's the back mark just behind Thompson, so he's okay. Calistani remains in third. Oh, that was uh, so close, Marco. Okay? And Thompson there just misplaced his car, didn't he? he? He was on the outside there. Was it better just to back out of that one temporarily and then have a go into turn four instead? Well, before Calistani tried his move at the right-hander airpin, I was just about to say, and I was interrupted, that I thought that uh, Thompson was uh, waiting for the right opportunity, which he did. He waited for the right opportunity, he, because Carasani tried the, an unexpected move there at the right-hander. You see here in the replay, you get your wheels on this kind of uh, grass and you cannot turn the car, absolutely. It's, uh, it's like a, a magnet, you go straight there and uh, now uh, some breathing space for these two. Thompson is 3.5 seconds behind Calistani, I think. So he's uh, got a long way to go. And of course, this off will not help his tires. Uh, so 
maybe we'll have to look in the mirrors now more than ahead because Fabrizio Gobbi is coming. Oh, a spin for Schmidt. Oh, yes. And, um, yep, Schmidt hasn't had really the pace today, but hasn't made any mistakes. But there is Stefan that just losing the car. Augusto, by the way, is into the pit. So it's his first pit stop, I think it might be. So, yeah, interesting strategy there. Um, I don't know, I think that must be a set. Yeah, it is a second pit stop. So, uh, actually, the second pit stops might be coming round very, very soon. In fact, any lap we expect the, um, these drivers to make their second pit stop unless they are going to go for the one stop but that's extremely unlikely because they only went about 17 laps on their first set of tyres so I expect them in potentially on this lap but yeah like you said Gobby on the uh, on the run and he's uh, had brilliant pace in this stint on that last lap was a second faster than Kalastani in third and he'll be really pressuring Josh Thompson imminently no, and, well, uh, we... Sorry, no, no, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, I was just going to say Ragusa and Jermanton very close as well, and Lindsay close as well. What, uh, what, what's happening now with uh, Thompson's mistake? Uh, this is going to help Andre and Calestani massively because now they are almost free to battle, and because Thompson will be involved in a battle with Gobby, they are going not, they're not going to lose a lot of time, and uh, Gobby is very, very, very close. Yeah, how important is it for Gobby to make this move, you think? Because he's got the fresher tyres. Um, what he doesn't want to do is get stuck behind Thompson. And then, because we, we assume he's going to go some two, three laps further on this stint, if he gets stuck behind Thompson, he's going to be vulnerable from the drivers behind due to the undercut, isn't he? So he's really got to make this move done now and go chase after second and third. Yeah, absolutely. We want to try to make the pass as quick as possible. Uh, so it's not easy because if you make the pass into turn one, then the driver that you just passed will get the DRS for the back straight. So not very easy to do, but I think he has to try to make a move and maybe also hope that Thompson still has not got back his rhythm after the mistake he made. And then it goes for the pass on the outside. Uh, it's half committed really to that outside move, didn't he? It was never really going to work out because he wasn't, you know, fully alongside. And you kind of need to be uh, like uh, a nose ahead, I think, onto Conrenchi. That's just lost him the uh, chance to go for a move down into turn four. And this is difficult for Thompson as well because he still wants to play him. And currently he's seeing Andre and Kalistani perhaps uh, move off into the distance. Yeah, um, Gobby. Uh, you are right, it was not a very, very uh, decisive move, and also Thompson had the right of way there, uh, so Gobby had to lift uh, in order to avoid contact. That cost him the chance to try to make the pass at the end of the back straight, still using the DRS. This is going to lose them even more time, going, going to lose Gobby time, uh, so if this is going to hurt his strategy because, of course, no overtaking chance now at the end of this lap because of the gap maybe next lap but now the gap is too far in order to get uh, close enough to try a pass in turn one of course we should remember that gobby could be on a uh, could be on a one stopper but um we're not 100 percent sure about that one we'll uh yeah we'll have to wait and see although to be fair they're all gone very far in this stint well i say very far They've gone about 15, 16 laps. I'm surprised we haven't seen any of these guys pit yet. And I'm almost in thinking in the back of my mind, hey, we've got this all wrong. Maybe it is a one-stopper. After all, uh, we just don't know. Uh, Lindsay, really close to, to Jermanson, by the way. And I think he might have a chance here, Lindsay. And um, is he on the outside there? It's Benjamin Lindsay. Swoops around the outside. He oh, the almost goes onto the grass. Did well not to, as he's still got a lot more grip round the outside. He can maybe get the inside for this next corner. Lindsay was so much more grip on the fresher tyres. He's going to have the outside for this next corner. Still hanging on is Jermanson. These two see the podium as a possibility, at least Lindsay does, with his country strategy. He's certainly on a one-stopper, and they are still side by side. This is fantastic battling. Lindsay just drops back in behind, maybe feels as though he can get the DRS down this next straight and make the overtake much easier. By the way, Andre and Calistani are super close. Um, and Calistani, I think, may have just made the overtake. Yeah, we see on our lifetime, they are very close. 
Calestani finally makes it. Now he has to defend big time in the Reta Opposta because he will not have DRS and Andrea has it. We've seen some pretty aggressive driving. Oh, they that's aggressive as well. And he's made it. Touched. I think there was a slight touch between them maybe, but Andre made it stick and it was, a, again, these drivers are putting on a show for us. Amazing racing. I saw some smoke, maybe maybe Calisani locked. I don't know what happened there. Maybe the smoke was from a little bit of contact. I, the cars looked pretty good. But yeah, I, as we said, you can pass in the Senna S, but then you are vulnerable to DRS in the back straight. And the more the laps go, ahead and the more these drivers get desperate for, for an overtake so we will see some pretty pretty crazy stuff and that was uh, up there beautiful racing by this yeah absolutely fantastic that's like by the way lindsay did make the move on jamanton in the end so uh lindsay up back up into p7 and remember he had an off earlier on after running in the top five and this was the move that we had to kind of pull away from so sorry for that uh, when we were live, but at least we get the replay of it. And, uh, yep, just goes straight to the inside. Not much defense put up by Jim Manson. And Lindsay still has a podium potential. Much fresher tires than these than his rivals. And he'll be charging down these drivers. Gobby's managed to get past Thompson. And, um, and yep, no, Thompson managed to pu pu uh, comes back, though, against Gobby. And back up into P4, these two have been battling against one another, kind of 75 percent of this event. Man, forget the split screen, we should get the screen divided in four halves uh, <laughs> to follow all this battle. Gobi, once again, you see the replay, he made the pass, then there was a little bit of contact, I think, and uh, yeah, Thompson got his position back. He's right in line still as Gobby hasn't really been able to put much um, proper pressure on Thompson on in recent laps. But he'll uh, yeah, he'll know that he's got a chance at this one. Andre and Calistani super close. Calistani to the outside again. Andre deep on the brakes. Can Calistani go all the way around the outside? He's gonna have the inside for the next corner. Andre gives him space and holds on to it for now. But Calistani has got an awesome run here and he's gonna have DRS. And such a better line hit. Andre goes defensive. Hasn't really got the overspeed as Palestine. But round the outside he goes. Is this the move which is going to give him second position? Andre still on the inside. Still hanging on to the second position. But back comes down the inside. And Andre could finally lose this one. Still round the outside. This is incredible Palestine. Andre tries to just squeeze him on the apex. Tries oh. to push him out. It does Kalistani. Andre though will not give this one in. He's got to go defensive once again. This is absolutely incredible. Oh! He's lost it, but he hangs on. Oh. How did he save that? How did he save that? Wow. What defense from Andre. I thought he'd lost that three or four times, but somehow he has hung on to that second position. That, that one defensive half lap almost was as good as all his defensive moves in the previous uh, uh, 35 laps absolutely unbelievable and thompson has lost out to gobby so he missed that one but um, it was pretty chaotic uh what we were watching instead gobby could still be under pressure from thompson though uh ragusa under pressure from lindsay lindsay will be on the back of these two face sooner that was bizarre there for josh thompson just couldn't get the power down could he yeah, he also has front wing damage, you see, front wing damage uh, for uh, for Thompson, so if he stops again, he will lose a little bit of time because they're going to change his front wing. Yeah, and it looks as though these drives aren't going to stop again, they've only got nine more laps to go. Oh, Ooh, oh was... look at that. Oh, wow, okay. We don't have live stewards in this race, but um, that was very, very interesting that I, I, I don't know which way to give that one because you could argue thompson shouldn't have been there um because gobby kind of had the right of way but yeah uh and that's just uh, compounded his uh, front wing problems and you see him struggling a little bit to keep up he's going to be under pressure from ragusa and uh and lindsay very very soon ah who needs life stewards i i say like they say in nascar boys have at it and have a good time now, of course, <laughs> open wheelers, uh, this is a little bit problematic. 
Also, we don't have the cautions where you can just go to the guy that makes you angry and give him a little tap or sometimes a big tap and uh, <laughs> turn him around. Here comes Lindsay. He's, um, this strategy for Lindsay, it, it, like, it seems as though this is one stop for everyone, doesn't it? Because we've got so few laps to go. Um, I was wrong earlier on, clearly, because they pitted so early for their first pit stop. But it seems as though for Lindsay, despite having much better pace than all these other drivers and having the fresher tyres, this, uh, this traffic, he hasn't quite been as quick through the, uh, with these overtakes as he needed to be. Otherwise, he'd, he'd be 5 and 4 podium right now, wouldn't he? Yeah, um, what the back straight PRS does, if you get the pass and then you manage to still stay ahead uh, in the back, on the back stretch, till the guy behind you gets so close to you, uh, and if he stays very close in the in the slow part of the corn of the track, then he will have a chance to pass you going back uh, to the main straight, to the front straight. So what this does. Uh, even if you manage to defend your position, you're basically always under pressure from the guy behind you. And this makes you lose a lot of time. And sometimes you can even... It's very hard to even complete the pass. See, Lindsay here uh, trying desperately to gain position. So he has DRS right now. To the inside. Oh, wow. oh very, very close. Yes, yeah, it's stuff and stop on the angle. Close he was, but yeah, all of a sudden he uh, was a long way back and they nearly managed to go for the inside line there, but couldn't quite make it in the end. Harrison Finch, so I thought he'd just go into the pits there, but no, nope. um, and uh, he's still very much happily in the lead, some 33 seconds clear of the rest of the field. He's been absolutely dominant. The fighting between the two drivers behind has also helped him out, um, but still that fight is going to continue. It was Brazina then, and uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, is this the end of his oh. race? Yes, it is. Disappointing for Jan. I think he was running in P9 at the time, so that's really disappointing. Yeah, P9, kind of the best of the rest of that uh, big pack. And actually, he was pretty close to Carl Jermanson as well, so oh, really frustrating for Jan. Having a really good run. Had a bit of a frustrating Silverstone where he was struggling for pace in the second half of the event, and I think there's been a spinner. Um, yeah, there has. Lindsay, oh dear, same corner. See, Junsao corner once again. Oh yes, in the grass, all, all, almost verbatim to the mistake he made before. So frustrating for Lindsay because without these two mistakes that he's made, he'd probably be on the podium right now. Those two mistakes cost him. Probably, uh, probably, probably about 12, maybe even 15 seconds. And currently, he's 10 seconds off second place. So it really does show how much those oh. mistakes have cost him. And that was how he managed to get back past Carl Jermanson then, um, through turn three. But he's got big front wing damage on a wonder if he's going to be able to hold back Jermanson for the rest of the race. Yeah. So he is because he's already second ahead. Bent front wing against. I don't, I don't know, maybe he got damaged by going the grass pretty hard because I don't remember any kind of contact for him. And now he's uh, under attack again from Germanton, side by side, first corner. He's got a lot of aero damage, hasn't he? That, that front wing, it's not costing him through the corners, it's costing him down the straight seemingly because he was a long way clear coming out of turn uh, turn 13 or sorry turn 12 and um, yes really struggling for straight line speed currently so what we've seen in the front of the pack right now Calistani has a little bit of a gap now from Andre like 0.6 of a second and Gobi has got one second over Tom's so the two battles up front are a little bit uh, subdued right now and we've got just four laps to go, so I don't know if Calestani and Thompson can manage to get back to Andre and Gobbi, respectively. I mean, they, they are very close, the second and third car, but you see Calestani is hanging just a little bit back compared to the previous laps, so maybe, maybe his tires have uh, given up or maybe he's got some kind of damage from the contacts they've had before. Yeah, five laps to go, including this one. 
and uh, tyres really are going to be screaming now. These second and third on Jay Calistani and also Thompson as well. Been on their tyres since lap 18. On Jay, in fact, lap 19. That really could help him. Gobby, lap 21. So he's got fresh tyres. Lindsay, lap 23. Although we imagine that aero damage isn't going to allow him to challenge for those positions late on. Also, Gobby. don't... Uh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, uh, Sam. No, I was just going to say, Gobby, um, course of second pass on that last lap. He's 1.6 seconds behind now. He's going to catch them by the end of the race. It's whether or not he's going to be able to pull, the, pull off the moves. I was going to say that also we don't have to forget that Calestani had that huge moment uh, at the Pico de Pato a couple of laps ago. He was uh, locking, uh, I think, all four wheels going sideways. So that had probably hurt the tires a little bit. So, and also that this is one of those things that can put you off your rhythm and I mean I was pretty sure that he was going to spin and take out Andre uh, so it's just amazing that he's able to go back and uh, complete his race but yeah sometimes you need uh, some 5-10 minutes to get back into the rhythm and try to get back to a normal race pace yeah and I wonder if it maybe overheated his tires a little bit maybe even caused a bit of damage because it was a big slide wasn't it as you said all four wheels locked up and that could have cost his grip levels ever so slightly Gobby on that last lap another half a second four tenths out of Calistani so he is closing in Calistani almost out of DRS range so it really does seem like you're right uh, Mark it doesn't seem as though he's going to be able to pressure Andre to the end of this event unless Enric makes a mistake Thompson still close to Gobby the goose Still got good pace, um, but really no one's saying the world light. In fact, Lindsay is the fastest driver out of this lot. He's the, he was the only driver in the 13s on that last lap. He is four seconds behind Ragusa though, and he's only closing in by about four, four, five tenths per lap. So it doesn't look like he's going to be able to catch. So now it, it, it almost seems as though, Marco, we're almost back into a... Uh, back into it, it also a little bit static the the, the tire gains that gobby and reduce to getting earlier on seem to have kind of been neutralized now yes uh and we know the more you go into the into your run the more the tires go down and at some point it doesn't make a huge difference to change the tires on lap 17 or, la or lap uh, 20. when they get worn out they get they pretty even out their performance all over the field so you make your gains in the beginning of the team when you have fresher tires and you just came out of the pits and more you go ahead the less you gain of course kalesan is still hovering around that 0.7 of 0.7 of a second mark after the drs zone so basically he gets the drs gets very close and then or somewhat close but gobby now is just one second behind uh, kalestani so we might have uh, an italian battle brewing here for the final few up yeah, I've only got, what, two more laps to go? Oh, sorry, one more lap to go, sorry. So, um, yeah, he's got to make this uh, got to make this one done now. He's got to get Slipstreet, so he's got to get the uh, DRS, and Gobby, I think, will do. He's eight-tenths behind this time, but um, he's running out of time to get it done. Out in the lead, though, Harrison Finch is absolutely driven away with this event. Nearly an hour on the clock and he's on his 46th lap of this race he's already nearly round the uh round t turn 12 he is now he's just driven away from the field wasn't didn't even get pole position but after a very good start getting the lead in the opening corner he's driven away from the rest of the field some 40 seconds clear and harrison finch will claim his first race victory of the season week two here at Interlagos. Absolutely superb drive. We'll watch back now to see if Enric Andre can hang on to second position. Can uh, uh, Kalistani hang on to Gobby? Thompson's under a bit of pressure from Ragusa as well, but Kalistani, he's going to be under pressure with the slipstream coming out of turn 12, going through turn 13. He's got absolutely nailed this exit. Those tyres will be screaming. They were on on lap 18. Gobby, lap 21. Has he got the run? It doesn't look like he has, but he's going to have a little bit of DRS. He's not closing in, though, down the pit straight, and Andre is going to hang on to second position. Kalistani third, Gobby hangs, uh, ends up in fourth, and Thompson holds on to fifth against Ragusa. What a race, Marco. That was great fun. 
fantastic battling out there, particularly between Andre and Kalistani. We saw some nice little uh, um, kind of strategy battles as well with a couple of drugs, uh, uh opting for that longer first stint. But um, yeah, it was absolutely superb out there. Beautiful, beautiful race. Uh, too bad that at the very, very end of the race, uh, the gaps uh, got a little bit bigger than uh, we had. But I mean, for the first... Uh, 40, 41 laps, so we had some crazy battles at the sharp end of the field. Congratulations to Harrison for his great win, but uh, Andre, Calestani, Gobbi, Thompson, Ragusa, Lindsay, Germanton, they all gave us something to remember, and we can only hope that uh, in a couple of hours the real F1 race is going to be half as good as this. This was amazing, amazing racing, guys. I seriously doubt so, because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Not only was this a, a fantastic uh, event, uh, the track this one's going to produce no overtaking, but um, this was a uh, yeah fantastic overtaking. In fact, you know, second and third, Andre and Kalistani, whilst Kalistani could pull ahead ever so slightly for a couple of corners, he never actually made the move fully on Andre, did he? And yet that was one of the best battles I've ever seen on I racing. Yeah, um, also maybe uh not maybe you were right um when you said that Karestani maybe had a little more pace than uh, than andre and that put andre under a lot of pressure but still he was able to maintain his cool and maintain the position even also uh, keeping a cool ahead when they were battling side by side uh, so it was not not easy for him to defend against such a good driver i mean they are both amazing drivers that goes without saying but i mean top, top job by everybody and uh, i'm uh, curious to ask matteo if not today maybe uh, later today in private what happened at the start because that was a terrible start for him and a terrible first lap and also why he was moving uh, left and right in the when he had the slipstream on the back stretch <laughs> that was very very odd but still he got p3 so good for him yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, the final order, Harrison Finch wins the event nearly an hour on the clock, like I said earlier. And uh, yeah, he takes away his first race victory of the season and very much takes commanding lead of this championship. Enric Andre finishes in second, held on against Matei uh, Kalistani. We've already talked about how good that battle was. It really was something to watch. Uh, Fabrizio Gobbi couldn't quite pull off that later first stop in the end, got caught up in a bit of traffic, also had a little bit of a slow um, couple of in-laps, and that kind of cost him, he'll be a little bit disappointed not to get a podium out there in fourth. Josh Thompson finishes in fifth, he just made one, a couple of mistakes in the end, that maybe cost him a chance at a podium, but very good drive from him, hopefully we'll see him later on in the series in fifth. Uh, Giuseppe Ragusa, uh, he was very quick in sixth, from 16th on the grid, what could have been for him if he'd put in a clean lap time in qualifying? Benjamin Lindsay comes home in 7th, what could have been for him as well? A couple of mistakes cost him over 10 seconds. He ended up only 8 seconds off 2nd place. Really will be disappointed with that 7th position, but certainly looking strong for future events. Carl Jermanson in 8th, he, did, he had a good clean run. Stefan Schmidt ends up in ninth. was running in 4th in the opening stages just didn't have the pace of the drives ahead. Renato Augusto, the final drives on the lead lap in 10th. And then it's Luca Furlich, um in 11th. He went long in the first and Alexis Sirokin didn't see too much of him in 12th. And then it's Christian, uh, uh, yeah, Christian uh, Ritzema in 13th. Pablo Lumbaras Suarez, 14th. And then seven laps down, Jan, uh, Jan Rosina with a crash at turn three. Tyson Meyer, day nine laps down in 16th. And Michael Kaiser with a uh, hardware failure. I've got a couple of interviews. I think we should um, bring in our race winner of the day. Harrison, absolutely superb drive. I don't know if you saw the bats all behind whatsoever. Um, it was quite an epic one. That kind of helps you get away a little bit, but you, you just outclassed the field today. Oh, thanks, yeah. I didn't really catch the battle at all, but I saw those within the second for pretty much the whole race. Yeah. Um, I just got my head down and just put laps in. Yeah, you certainly did that. Um, Interlagos, 
um, really strong circuit for you, clear. I think he said actually it was one, it was one of his favourites last week. So, um, have you enjoyed kind of testing around here throughout the week? Uh, yeah, definitely made quite a lot of gains in the setup as well. It was pretty much spot on. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble with it towards the end of the stint, but I think that was because the conditions were a bit hot, really, so the tyres went off quicker. But yeah, yeah I have enjoyed this track. And um, the tyres we saw, like, like you said, they're going off a little bit near the end. We saw a lot of drivers kind of pitting in on that kind of 17, 18. In a 46 lap race, that, that was, well, we found that a little bit unusual. We thought maybe there'd be a few drivers go for the two stopper. But um, were the tyres quite easy in the end? Did that enable you to maybe put in a, an earlier pit stop than normal? Um, I probably could have pitted earlier, but there was no point really, because I didn't have to defend from an undercut or anything, so I just went to the normal lap. I was always going to pit on lap 20 if the race was normal, but I can understand why they pitted a bit earlier, trying to get the undercut and the cars ahead. Yeah, and then uh, in qualifying, we saw you, of course, at very uh, competitive, only two one hundredths behind the pole lap, but have you got any idea why... Maybe in qualifying you weren't dominant, but in the race you were. Do you think that's in setup or or maybe driving style? Uh, no, because I went straight on at turn one. <laughs> uh, on my first lap, it would have actually been a point one, but then I backed out because I knew I could go two or three tenths faster, and I thought other people would have been closer to that. But then I just messed up turn one straight away on the second lap. Ah, oh, right, okay, yeah, thanks for giving that, us that insight. And, um, yeah, I, I personally have forgotten which uh, race is next for us, but, um, no, it's spa. yeah, Spa, I think. yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, 100%, so that will be a very interesting one. Looking forward to that? Uh, yeah, I quite enjoy Spa, it's a fun track. Uh, there'll be quite a lot of overtaking as well, so, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, definitely. And uh, before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, uh, big thanks to the team as usual. And uh, big thanks to Jorge for teaching me how to start the car. It was much <laughs> better this week compared to last week. So, yeah, yeah, it was to... an awesome start, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, uh, that, thanks, mate. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. All right, thanks. See you later. Next up, we've got our second place driver. Enric Andre and Enric that was possibly the best defensive driving I've ever seen in real life or on iRacing how on earth did you manage to keep Matteo behind for all those 46 laps? Oh to be honest I have no idea I was really struggling with the tyres uh, I think that uh, at the start of the race I was faster than him but uh, yeah my front tyres were just dying um, through the whole stint uh, like I finished the race, I was uh, maybe 30% of tires lasting at the front. So, well, I just try to defend and try to be smart. And like, for example, I think that he tried a record move, and uh, like I let him the the, the the first line, like the in, inside line. And I thought, yeah, he will dive me, and I hope he will spin. Well, he did not, but like you, you need to be smart and know what the guy behind will, will do. Uh, and I, I was really lucky because I think that we made some contact. So, yeah, fair play to him to have uh, this nice battle during the world race. Yeah, definitely. I think it was around lap 36, I think, where you two went side by side for the entirety of the, the uh, first half of the lap, if not more. And that was, yeah, quite incredible. At any point, did you kind of think that you'd lost the position or did you feel as though you kind of had it in control in, in control throughout? Uh, I thought I, wa I was losing the position because I was struggling on the, on the traction and then I saw him uh, deploying his battery. Uh, I was, okay, so I need to pass him now or he's just ripped. And uh, actually I was quite surprised because he didn't defend the inside line. So I, I went for it and luckily uh, I managed to, to get the position back. Yeah, yeah, it was very, very impressive out there. And um, yeah, Cospa next week full-length race. Do you think those full-length races uh, prefer you? Do, do, do you think those slightly longer races, one and a half hours, are, are better than the one-hour races that we've had today? I pre actually, I prefer the one repulsive race because uh, I'm not someone who is very good on a one lap or uh, on a stint over. I'm, I'm much better in consistency. 
So um, yeah, I think uh, I will be quite good there. And uh, actually, Interregos is my worst track on the calendar. Like I really hate this track. So yeah, hopefully I can maybe challenge Finch uh, at Spa. So we'll see next week. Yeah, if you can finish second at your worst circuit, then that's a very, very good sign for the rest of the season. Um, before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, I would like to thank Richard, no, the president of Race Cash, to help, to help me for on the setup and to motivate uh, me doing uh, the Formula One uh, season. And uh, also to Fabrizio Donoso, uh, who helped me a bit also on the setup, and uh, to the world team and actually to the, to the sponsor, so Game Boss Image. Thanks, mate. And uh, yeah, we'll see you at Spa on uh, same time next week. See you, guys. Also got the fifth place driver, uh, Josh Thompson, with us. And Josh, um, I don't know really how to feel about that. Are you disappointed that you couldn't get the podium or are you just relieved that you could in the end hold off uh, the goose in those final couple of laps? Human. Absolutely human. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't. I have no words to explain what happened. Really, I'm no. I, in a way, it was the start of the meeting. Like before it started, I said to Alex, who was spot me, I said, "Look, I'll be happy with top five, being sick all week and moving house. So I've had literally no time this week." But no, I threw it away a little bit myself. But you know, can't help everything else. Yeah, and it, it, the kind of turning point where when you kind of lost perhaps the opportunity to get the podium was that move into turn one three wide um anything that you do differently now or do you think um you're maybe just pushed off the circuit a little bit in the end well i got the run out in the last corner i knew those two were battling so obviously I stayed back a bit trying to save the tires so i knew i'd be able to get them at the end the way they're battling the entire race obviously i should have been in front of them but i messed up my in lap which then put me back behind them with the undercut that's the main reason what i tried to go for but looking back no, because I thought I was clear of Matteo and alongside Enric. But I left enough room so I could go for the cutback just in case. And then go into the corner and Matteo then went pretty wide. But, like, it was a racing thing, but in a way I thought I'm harsh done and then I get annoyed when I'm the one who gets blamed for by people. Yeah, yeah. Can I chime in for a question? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. I saw in the... <laughs> Post race discussion in chat <laughs> that I think uh, Fabrizio was not very happy with your driving uh, style. I think. What do you say about that? Nothing. Didn't do anything wrong. I don't think you're not gonna like. Everyone knows if you watch a real thing or race, you're never gonna do anyone on the outside in turn one unless you've got a clear overlap, which you never had. He was always gonna have to hit the rear of me to get past into that corner. That's why I covered it. And then the cutback did nothing wrong there. The only time what I felt anything really happened, it was a good race. The only time what anything happened was when I let him go for the move down the inside and he lost the rear and smashed into me. To me, I don't know what else I could have done in that situation. Yeah, yeah, it was a very, um, very interesting battle between <laughs> two guys and uh, certainly gave us a lot of entertainment at least. And uh, yeah, Spa next time. Uh, do you know if you're going to be able to make that one? Yeah, 100%. And that one is going to be more of a redemption race, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, looking for a podium, undoubtedly. And uh, yeah, any shout outs you'd like to give? Yeah, uh, you guys are taking over the broadcast this season. Looks fantastic. Uh, Harrison, flawless drive. Can't really say anything against that. Uh, Enric, uh, everyone really fab. Everyone who was in around the battle, even though it wasn't how I wanted it to end, it was still a fantastic race. Uh, Radicals for all the help and Alex Adler for spotting me through the race. Yeah, thanks, mate. And uh, yeah, see you in a week's time. I'll see you in a few hours for the BSR. Uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> you're going to be doing BSR later on. Yeah, That's... yeah, yeah, I will be. Yeah, cool. See you then. See you, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, of course. Uh, on that note, BSR Grand Tour, by the way, is on at quarter past 8 BST. I think that's uh, quarter past 7 uh, GMT, so certainly tune in for that one. But uh, back to this race, Marco. And uh, yeah, just another awesome event. We saw a great event at Solveston. And I just think, yeah, with, with the high degradation of these tyres, the competitiveness and the even match of these drives, it, uh, th these couple of races have been absolutely superb that we've covered. Yeah, and I cannot wait for the next uh, race at Frank Champs. Going to see some 
amazing racing on what I think is probably the best track in Europe and also a track I love dearly because it's the only track where I spent a night in at the 24 hours of 2016 and I can tell that uh, iRacing has done a magnificent job getting the track into a virtual representation. Having been there, it's everything is spot on. You cannot you can't believe how steep the eau rouge is and these drivers will have to manage with the drs once again in the camel straight but also we'll have a lot of fast corners and uh, we have uh, the hairpin uh, and uh, the bus stop chicane the blanchimon corner they've put on a spectacle here in one of the shortest track of the calendar and next week we go probably to the longest track of the calendar and uh, it's going to be i think even better yeah will be an absolutely awesome race uh, 44 laps of Spa Frankenstein. Certainly join us for that one because later on we've got BSI going to talk. Tomorrow we've got World GT. I think on Tuesday we've got um, BSR MX5 as well. So certainly tune in for all the races we've got on uh, on the channel later this week. But for me, from Market and Scott, uh, we bid you goodbye. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can join us next week, same time uh, for uh, the Spa 44 laps. See you then.